Welcome to my abode. Oh yeah. This whole setup, and particularly this Udi, is giving me really Jenna Marbles vibes. You know when she used to like say, me time or chillaxing or something? Fake fan. Back so soon. Yes, that is true. I had a really good idea for a video, so I thought I would get on it and do it. Look at this Christmas tree, it's real. It's a real tree. All right, so today's video, just gonna jump straight into it. It's gonna be autism and processing. So what does that mean? Put all the notes on my phone. Cause I've recently been like in a really creative spell. Happens sometimes. Uh, if only it happened all the time. So what do I mean by autism and processing? I mean the amount of time it takes my brain to do things. A bit like a processor in a computer, right? I went to see a talk which I think inspired this video by an autistic speaker called Greg Ricks. Greg Ricks. I'll put his information in the description box. His talk heavily focused on the kind of computing and processing speed aspects of autism and that was what really inspired this video because before that talk I never really thought about it. I was like why am sometimes because I used to be quite mean to myself and be like I'm being stupid. Why am I being so s slow basically and really beating myself up about it and I didn't really think about it. I was like that's my autism. That makes so much my autism kind of combined with my anxiety, I think. It's really clicked into my head that one of the main aspects of my autism, in my opinion, is my processing, how much that affects me and my everyday life. So I thought I'd do a video about that today to sort of elaborate on that. And hopefully other autistic people out there will be able to relate. Please tell me I'm not alone in this because it is a very large aspect of my life. I've already said that. Let's begin with my notes. I don't really know how I'm gonna split this video up into chapters and stuff, but timestamps are always in the description. Oh yeah, I've not even said who I am. My name is Neve. I do videos about autism. I really wanna do videos about ADHD because I also have that. I have OCD and anxiety as well. I was diagnosed with autism when I was 15. I will link you here, card, to my I have autism video. I do videos about different autistic topics. Today's autism and processing. According to my phone mobile, I have very slow processing speed for new tasks or new situations. If I go into like a new place, any new situation that I haven't been exposed to, I am at a complete loss. Like my brain is just like question marks everywhere. I think I tweeted this, but you know that meme where the guy's just got like question marks around him? I'll put it here. That is me. I would say 90% of the time because unless I'm doing something the exact same every single day, which obviously is not the case because life is changeable and things happen, I will just be so confused. I think confusion is definitely my overriding emotion. Any new situation or new person even that I can't like immediately connect with or like understand, I will get really anxious and my processing speed goes completely out the window and the way I'm thinking completely slows down. This is extremely frustrating because obviously on the surface I might be verbose, I might be talking words, wow, but in my head it's like the gears have crunched and I can't actually fully compute what's going on. So I said in my video of my mum recently, sorry, another link, um, that I have a super computer brain. I don't think that's technically true. Essentially, everyone else's brains sort of like connect properly, right? Like you have bits sort of all over the place, but it kind of connects when you're trying to think of something or like make the connection. For me personally, it's like all the bits of my brain are really far apart. So when I'm trying to like get to the information, I have to like take more time to do it. it feels like I'm trying to grab the word from like really far away. Often I have this when I think of a word and I'll be like, oh, what's that word for this thing? And it's a really obvious word. I don't know, I wanna think of the word theater and I'll be like, oh, you know, I went to the theater. It's like that delay happens because my processing speed is like slow and trying to get this one word out of my memory bank. So I've put here, I don't know how accurate this is. My brain has low RAM. I mean, computer RAM. Isn't that what makes your computer go faster? I know like, I added some RAM to my computer and it was it was faster, I mean. Maybe a very high memory space, like I can remember quite a lot of really random things. Not often the important things, bizarre snippets from like early childhood movies that I used to love and stuff like that. I really hope this video makes sense. This is why I love familiar repetitive tasks or places or groups of people. I cannot adjust to a new place for a very long time 
in the sense that my brain doesn't feel like it's properly processing until I know everyone there, until I've done like a very similar thing every single day. That's exactly the kind of job that I think autistic people need. I will link up here my autism and job interviews video. So many links. This is really not in order. <laughs> Very typical. Um, so I don't understand jokes. There has to be a very obvious punchline or like the sarcasm has to be really obvious. Like most of the time, I think when you're telling a joke that you're being mean or rude and I can't tell from the context that you're being like funny. And what does this have to do with processing? Well, this links to what I'm about to say, which is another thing that I think really underlines like my entire existence. Is that a bit dramatic? I don't know. I feel like I have to translate everything people say. When I have to compute anything someone's verbally telling me, it feels like there's a two to three seconds of like panickedness. I get really panicked that I can't respond like immediately and maybe the pause to them isn't that torturous, but to me personally, I have such a repertoire of things that I automatically say because I get worried that if I don't fill that two to three second space that they're gonna think what's going on in their brain meaning my brain. <laughs> Zoom into my brain if you like. That's what's going on and um, I'm trying to find a response. This is why when I'm really anxious I will default to things like just laughing or doing, not like in a malicious way, this is really awkward and I don't know what to say or do situation, or I will say something completely like Mark in that Peep Show episode where he's like, chance would be a fine thing. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. I'll try and fill in that gap because I'm like, I need to fill it in. And then often it doesn't even make sense with what we've just talked about, but I like have to fill it because I get so anxious about the fact that I have to process what they say. That two to three second delay is torturous. And that plays into the jokes thing because I can't understand jokes immediately either. <laughs> Also, if there's anything loud in the environment, particularly if someone's talking, for some reason my brain zooms in on it and I can't filter out like that input. So this is why I find it really difficult in groups of people because you have to obviously filter out the voices you don't want to hear and like listen to the person who's directly talking to you or whatever, but I can't do that. And I feel like particularly with speech or anyone talking, immediately for me, I have to like, process what they're saying and like translate it. So all these different voices at once can be a massive headache and I'm like, oh my God, I have to process all these sounds at once. And that's definitely an autistic thing because sensory stimuli, we're getting way too much. I'm gonna do a video about reading at some point because I love books. I mean, you can't see them, but I've got a whole bookcase there. Basically, if there's anything involving words, I think my brain just latches onto it, which might be why I feel like I have to read everything that I see. Like, if there's a word, I will read it. If there's a road sign, I'll read every word on it. I don't know what this is. I think that's the similar thing with words and speaking. I feel like I have to tune into people's words, even though I don't. It's just like an automatic reflex thing. So unpredictable behavior is the bane of my existence. And I get really anxious again. I'm very slow to process it. I'm like, where does this fit in the schema of my brain of like, how do I react to this person? Particularly when I worked in retail, like if you get a customer and they say something really off the cuff or like they do something, like I once had a guy sit on the counter at work and I was like, like a, a customer and I was thinking, this is probably not right, but like, what do you say in this situation? Like obviously you say get down, but I wasn't assertive enough at that point. And it just seemed like I didn't have a compass for what in the world to do at this point. So unpredictable behavior is like immediately panic inducing. And you also get it when you're in public, obviously. Like if I'm on the bus, that lovely place. Sometimes people like bang the window shut. Why do bus windows close so loudly? Does anyone else notice that? Someone will say or do something unpredictable and I can feel my brain, I can feel the cogs going like, what am I meant to be doing? Is this like illegal? And then that just causes a spiral of anxiety and panic and so on. I can't fit that up into my idea of what human behavior is. T -t 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 -t. In order to ground myself in these situations, sometimes I will just look in the periphery and like randomly look at something to sort of like make myself feel less anxious and less like I don't know what the hell I'm doing or what I'm meant to say. And this means I pick up on some things that are actually sometimes weirdly useful. So for instance, I really don't have a good example, but like I say I was on a tube train and I will like look up at the top of the tube train and there'll be a poster for something. And then later on, I will see that exact poster again. Or like someone will ask a question about the thing that was on the poster and like in the in my periphery and I'll be like, I can answer that because I read that poster. Weird stuff like that happens to me all the time. But I will like focus on something in order to like take in information. I guess it's because that information is static and it's not like people who are really unpredictable. It's like just facts, like a phone number or something or um, data that is concrete. If I was at work and I was panicking, I'd probably look at something like 
the fire exit sign or something because that's that's a map and I love maps, maps are great, um, of like A to B and that makes me feel better. Data, numbers, things like that, I can process. I can do it pretty well. I will say my mental math is a bit dodgy. Um, I can do addition. How did I get onto maths? Life is maths. Words feel like a tangle before they come out. I think that's just my brain trying to find the right word and it taking forever. I've often had this, right? And I think this is an ADHD specific thing, so I'm sorry to the people watching who don't have ADHD as well. My brain is faster than my mouth and often my voice even sounds alien to me. I remember as a kid, right? Because obviously I've had ADHD my whole life, but it wasn't diagnosed till I was like 20 something, which is ridiculous. I remember vividly as a kid being like, I hate talking. Not in a selective mutism way, I've never really had that, but I was just like, speaking is so annoying, and writing, because it's so much slower than what my brain's thinking. I wouldn't be able to remember- see, this is ironic, because the TV's playing downstairs and I can't tell my landlady to turn off because, bless her, she's quite old, and now I can't hear anything because all I can hear is the words on the TV. This just is completely ironic. This is like ADHD live. ADHD live. My brain is like, where was I? And I remember being like, am I the only child in the world who just finds speaking really frustrating because I can I can see the words, because again, I'm quite a wordy person. Like even in my head, I'll visualize words all the time. They come out so much slower, obviously, because I can't speak as loud as my brain's thinking. And I found that really annoying and I was like, Wow, speaking is so annoying. And then also if I was writing a story, I would forget what I was about to write because I'd be thinking way further ahead than what I was writing. Uh, which is a shame because um, I love writing and I love fiction and I love writing fiction, but sometimes my brain is just like blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It feels like a burden having to speak. Instructions have to be in order in order for me to process them properly, like a bit like a, a computer or a machine. You know, remember in maths in secondary school, you'd have to do the bod maths or something. There was some program that my maths teacher did like every lesson and it was really basic. And I was like, why are we doing this? But it was like one box goes into another box and then you get the answer. My brain is like that though. I have to have like A plus B equals C. So this is why I like computers, I think as well, because obviously computers are a binary code. They're like, you click on a button, it does something. And that can make a lot more sense to me in my brain than nuances and if there's like exceptions to the rule and stuff. I don't really have a very good theory of mind and theory of mind means that you can't imagine what other people are thinking because you're only able to visualize your own thoughts. Does that make sense? So I can't really relate to other people is what I'm trying to say ever and I don't instinctively do it and I can't really do it. If people are expecting me to do something a certain way I won't be able to tell they want that and my processing might be completely illogical and my pattern of doing things might be completely illogical because it doesn't fit someone else's way of doing it and they'll be like annoyed that I didn't do it their way but I'll be like I'm processing it my way let me live. So basically, the moral of this story is we are not stupid, but we are slow, but slow in a way that means we're properly processing what you said and how to help autistic people, right? Only tell on autistic people necessary information. If I'm being shown a new environment or something and then the person goes, oh yeah, and that's the room for that. I will like think that's immediately relevant when it's not and I'll probably think of that all the time and it will just circulate through my head and I might not even ever need to use that room that they just pointed out for no reason. So just stick to the like necessary information. I need space and time to process so give us a bit more time to process stuff. Freedom to ask as many questions as possible. Things don't often make sense to us. So freedom to ask as many questions as possible until the thing is fully implemented into our brain so we can process it well and stuff. Written instructions or visuals. So when I was at school we had to do food tech. Fun. Um, to some people that is fun but for me it was terrible. Unless something is ordered in a orderly way, I won't be able to process it. You know what I mean? I need to have preferably sequential ordered instructions for tasks and they need to be written or like in a, a way that I can read them and preferably in advance of when I'm going to be doing the task as well because, you know, I don't want to just turn up and be like, well, I'm panicking because I don't know what I'm doing now. This is also why we kind of need timetables because then we can like think about things before we start doing them. It gives us more time to like process the information, it gives us more of a, a breather in our own brain space to be like, this is new information I might need to put into my brain. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and we need to repeat a task loads of times before it like goes properly in and before it can become a more seamless process, which I know everyone kind of has a guess. You can't be great at stuff straight away. I need a lot more experience doing things that other people might be like, this is really boring. So for example, um, I need a lot more time shadowing other people. It's like when you follow people around and see what they're doing and then you can compute on your own what they're doing. I need a lot more of that if I'm doing a new task in a job because that repetition is priceless for me. Our brains are wired completely differently. That's part of what we have. It's a neurodevelopmental condition. So we need to have things 
in an order in order for our brains to even process them in the first place. So if someone showed me a computer program, I'd be like, yeah, sick, I can use this. Cause like, I need less time doing that because computers are a lot more straightforward for me. They always have been. They do what you expect them to do. They're very similar all around. You kind of just click a button and it does something, whatever. Yeah, so computer stuff's fine. But usually if I have to shadow people for other things, if particularly if it's related not to computers or to some sort of automated technology process, then I will need more shadowing time. I really hope this video makes you understand my brain a bit better and the way that autistic people process things, at least in my experience. Processing is like my current word, like it's just running through my head over and over. I'm like, this explains so much of my life. And it's mostly to do with change and unfamiliar environments and trying to slot them into my brain. If something doesn't fit into a box in my brain, that's when I start panicking and when I can't process it. Often I'll only really retain information unless it's extremely interesting to me. If it's to do with my special interest, I will box that information and I'll be able to process the hell out of that information and it will come straight out of my brain. But if it's like anything I'm not vaguely interested in, I will not retain it. I think I've said the word processing about 400 times. Thank you for watching. Here are some more videos you might like. Oh my god, so cool. Don't really know what else to say. I'm Neve. thank you for watching. Have a nice day, have a nice Christmas. Keep chillaxing. Maxin, chillaxin, I should never do that again. Right.